Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is your boy, C I double Z Y, back at it again with another episode of the Voices of Value podcast. And today, for the second week in a row, we're doing shit a little bit different where I am not on camera. I don't know about y'all, but this feels a little bit weird hearing a voice but not seeing the voice. Abram, our good guest of today. Hi. Second time guest. What do you think about the idea of having the interviewer behind the camera? What's your honest opinions? Um, I, it depends on the intention. Like, if you want the intention to be more on the the listener, I mean, on the um the interviewee, then I think it, it like it works well. Um, yeah, I, I I like it. It depends on also it depends on like how it's edited and stuff like that. But Thanks. I think it's dope. All right, so boom. What if my thought process when I first started the podcast is like, hey, this is gonna be my well, I'm not saying this was the intention, but this is going to be part of my way that I build my personal brand. So I want to yeah. be on camera so that people can develop a relationship with me. Yep. Do you think that's egocentric or is that just somebody's intention with doing maybe a certain type of content and there's no problem? What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I don't think it's, it's egocentric at all. Um, I do think it, you know, goes back to intention, you know, like if it is more just like a look at me kind of thing, you, you will feel that by the way you interview the people that you bring on. So, um, but also, you know, like there are other podcasts where people resonate with the uh, the interviewer and then listen to the podcast. Cause so I think it just depends on how you how you go about it and your personality type and all that stuff. But, facts, yeah. facts. I guess we'll just have to let the let the data tell us what's up. You yeah. Know? But like, your audience, how y'all been feeling about the past few episodes? But speaking of audience, past few episodes, if you've been here for long enough, matter of fact, if you've been here since March of 2021 then you do know our guy Abram because, like I said, this is his second time on the show, and the first time it was done virtually. I believe we were in the midst of still coming out of the pandemic, so yeah. people still weren't necessarily comfortable with, uh, um, you know, just being all in people's face quite yet. Yeah. Um, but when we think about 2020, 2021, how fast has time flied in your head? Like, do you feel like it's been speedy, like galaxy, like, holy shit, how did we get here? Or do you feel like you're still coming out of the pandemic in your head? No, nah, it's been like, like very, very quick. So I'm like, what the hell has happened? Um, Cause there've been so many changes from the last time we spoke to like now. And I'm like, wow, dude, like when I was, when last time we talked, I was in a college dorm. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's, it's like so much has gone on. There's like, Okay, I'm just going with life at this point. So Absolutely. Man, like you said, last time we spoke, you were in a college dorm. And I feel like a lot of people have so many different journeys from like high school to college to like career. Yeah. So when you think about your transition out of college into like life as Abram, as an adult, paying rent, um, yeah trying to find ways to give money, trying to set yourself up for your future, thinking about, I don't, we'll, we'll dive into this maybe, but like thinking about kids, family, yeah. uh, par partnership, like, do you feel like you've advanced really slowly? Do you feel like you're behind your peers or do you feel like you don't even think about where your peers are at? Or do you feel like you've advanced quick? Like, damn, I'm already making this money or I'm already doing this. And I just got out of college two years ago. Like, yeah. talk to me about mentally how you feel you're at, like, as a person who like recently finished college. Yeah, I feel like, um, first I'll say that I feel like I'm very fortunate to be where I'm at in my career. Um, where I, you know, like I get to do cre like creative stuff and I get to work with like entrepreneurs and startups and like that's what I'm really, like that's what I'm passionate about as well. Um, but I also get to like storytell for a living. Like that's really my job. Like I get to be a storyteller. So um, I think the transition from college to now, um, especially the transition out of college has been almost like the work I was putting in while I was in college is starting to pay off. So um, adulting definitely like slapped me in the face. It's like, I was like, oh, I got this money. I got a job. Like, I had a job in college to where I was doing like ad agency work and stuff like that. But like once, you know, I got an apartment and then bills start coming in. I was like, oh, dang, now I see why people be stressing. Like, and even though I was making a good amount a month, I was like, bro, like, you got to pay rent. You got to pay, like, utilities. You got to mm -hmm. do all this stuff. And I think I was fortunate in college. Like, I had room and board. 
covered for because being an RA, so like, mm-hmm. I don't gotta worry about that. So mm-hmm. I just had a couple bands to just keep in my pocket. <laughs> he was like, he was like, he was like listening to Future. He was listening to Future in his dorm room, like got a couple bands well, exactly. and I band it up. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can splurge on some food. I can buy me some nice things. So now it's like more of a budgeting mindset, being more responsible with with my money. Um, but in, in terms of like my career, it's definitely been. There was like last summer, transparently, where you know I left my job and it was just a period of what's next. Mm. Um, and I had you know clients that I was working with and all that stuff, but um, I think it was just a season of figuring out what I really wanted to do. It's like not just jumping into one thing um, or jump into the next thing just because I need the money. So, um, but before that, like you know, I was privileged enough to be traveling and having multiple clients and working and all this stuff. So, hmm. yeah. When you, you know, you, you started off saying you're, you're, you know, grateful for where you're at now in your career. And like I said, you just finished college recently. So when you think about all the cool shit you've done, like as yeah. a young individual and all the great storytelling you've done, yeah. the audience you've built, the people you've worked with, and you're so young, yeah. are you scared or are you excited about the next 10 to 20 years like fuck i've already done all this like that's a good question like i'm like whoa like there's so much more life left before i start looking old like even even just physically looking old or feeling old or feeling tired of work you know like some people claim to be tired of work at 50 or 60 so you just have so much more time and you like to me i look at you and i'm like damn my boy killing shit. Like I need to level up. I, I need to, that. I need to get on top of my shit. I need to get better at storytelling. You know, I need to, I need yeah. to learn from Abram, blah, 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 blah. So, and I feel like a lot of people in town really look up to the work that you do in, in terms of, and I don't want to just say the town yeah. cause I'll be in your TikTok comments too. So people yeah. all over the country <laughs> be looking at all the dope shit you're doing. And again, you're young, bro. So are you scared about what's next or are you more excited or talk to me about the feelings? Um, it reminds me, this might be, like, too deep, but, like, I was raised in church, so uh, this is, like, scripture is, like, to whom much is given, much is required, and, like, when I think about the next 10 to 20 years, I'm, like, I feel like I was given a gift, and you have to maintain that gift over time, and it's, like, it's kind of like a flower, like, you have to keep on nourishing it for it to grow to its full potential, and I feel like I'm still at this, like, little baby flower, and I'm continue like putting in the work um and I think it's easy to be jaded by success like especially early success that's why like I actively say like I I don't necessarily care about like followers or you know brand deals and all that stuff um because that can easily make you lose sight of what you really want to do and I I would just want to story tell I don't know where that leads me like but I know I'm going to keep on working to get to where I don't know when 10, 20 years is where I'm going to be at. It could be, you know, having my own company. It could be working with somebody else. It could be on my own. Like, I don't know what that looks like, but um, I know for right now, I just continue to nurture the gift that I've been given. So that's, hmm. I don't know if that really answered the question, but. No, I definitely provided some insight. I love that. And two things pop in my head. Number one, Shout out to the air condition, ladies and gentlemen. Always remember when you have a podcast, you need to turn the AC off in your crib before you start. There's a major key for all people who are about to start a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, number two, um, I like to call out faultiness of myself sometimes yeah. on my podcast just to make sure that people see how authentic we keep it over here. Number two, you keep saying all you want to do is story tell. Whose story are you telling? Mine. Mm. Like, as, as of right now, it's... I'm obviously I'm helping others tell their stories, but like, um, I think it's a mix of my story, but also stories that aren't being highlighted, mm-hmm. or things that are being talked about. Mm-hmm. So I feel like um, this might just be a hot take of mine, but on social media, there's a few, there's a couple topics that we talk about all the time. Um, whether it's relationships, whether it's burnout, whether it's something related to being a content creator, how to grow your business. Like, so these is like, to me, that's the playing field of topics. There's so many other things to talk about and so many other things people deal with and just don't talk about it. So if that means I have to be vulnerable and put myself out there, 
Because these, like, I feel like everyone lays at night and starts thinking about just stuff all the time. Like, delusion. Are we living in a simulation? Like, I don't know, um, love. And, and in terms of just not, like, how to get in a relationship, but, like, what is love? Like, I, there's so many other things to talk about, and I just, like, I just want to story tell all of these things. So, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people do have those thoughts, but they don't necessarily know how to put them into words or how to, um, I guess, process them deep enough to have a conversation or yep. or to share. So I guess, is it a natural skill of yours to just be able to sit down and be like, this is what's flowing in my brain. I'm going to record this audio and this is what I'm thinking about right now. And then obviously we'll talk a little bit more about how you put that into video because obviously we know you ain't walking around with the camera just saying all the words you, yeah. you say in the other, you know what I'm saying? But um or are you, do you have like some time that you spend each day where you're like, I'm going to read more about what internet or information or books have to say about living in a simulation. Yeah. Or I'm going to read more about what it means to love yourself as a black man. And then yeah. I like read about that and I'm like, mm, here are my thoughts on that. Let me record that. Like, I guess the question is, how do you um, approach telling a story um, and being authentic around it as well? Yeah. Um how I approach telling a story is going against the formula that's been given. So like, if you look at, you know, like the great directors like Spike Lee or Melvin Van Peebles, or even, you know, you got, you know, the, the big ones, the Christopher Nolan, you know, all these big guys, like they're going against the norm of traditional storytelling. And just the way I process it is there's a story within like everyday life. Like there's, always some something some lesson you can pick out of it um and i i've pushed myself even with this style of content is to be more present um because i'm an overthinker like i i cannot shut my brain off um and i have an internal monologue so it's never shutting up so but it's like learn to try to silence it just a little bit to be more present i know i did a series about um black masculinity and it came from a conversation with my father and my father is very, you know, like a matter of fact kind of guy. He didn't didn't really open up when we were younger. And that was the first time he really opened up. And that was a time when I was like present. I was like, I think I might, this might need to be something that's talked about in a broader sense. Um, so that's when I reached out, you know, to other family members that I admired. Um, but if I, I feel like if I wasn't present in that moment and just thinking about other things, or if I was thinking about, oh, this can be really good content. Like, one, it wouldn't, the conversation wouldn't have come from an authentic place, and uh, my dad can pick up on that. Um, and I think the, the story, uh, just the topic in general, wouldn't have been as authentic. Hmm. So, yeah. Interesting. I think when I watch your content, just across all platforms, um, and even as we talk here right now, and when we talk the first time, you come off as a very calm reserved individual and the other day yeah. we were able to i don't want to say collaborate i was able to participate in something that you and um isai were putting together yeah um and i saw you in a different state i saw you in a different uh different type of energy that i've yet to be able to see you in because again the majority of the time that i see you it's very much while you're working yep. or your content online Yep. And while you're working, you're very much focused, not really speaking. It's a fist bump, and we pass by each other right after that. And while you're online, the content you put out is very calm, like intellectual. You were very energized. You were very <laughs> hyper. You're actually a really funny guy. Yeah. You're, you're actually very animated. So can you talk a little bit about, like, who is Abram? Like, do your best to describe who is Abram. Um, Abram is a curious kid who happens to be in a 25-year-old body. So... Um, I don't know, I, 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 I am reserved, um, quiet, um, thinking all the time. I sometimes ask too many questions, can get on people's nerves. Um, but I'm also, I feel like I'm a loyal guy. Like if I rock with you, I rock with you until, you know, it's given a reason to not to. But, um, I think overall I'm just like a kid, like for real just kid with responsibilities. Um, I, I do think the the, uh, the side that you saw that night, it was like I was really comfortable, and mm. I was also with my homies. Mm. So 
like Isai and Broderick, like we hanging out multiple times a week mm -hmm. and we're filming each other's content. So I can be, there's still a, um, a spirit of professionalism, but we can also, like we know each other's skill set so well where we can laugh and joke with each other and still get the work done. Yeah. And it still looks like very, very fire. Mm. So in that moment, like it was just like any other content night. It was, we just, hey, let's go ahead and get this done. Yeah, it's hot. It was hot in there. Um, but, you know, all these people, was, everybody was like cool. So I just felt like I could be a little bit more open. And mm. I, I, I appreciated that. I so, love yeah. that. I, that was actually a pretty cool opportunity for me to see you in that space. Yeah. I think when I admire certain people, I really want to get to know them, but sometimes there's not time in life to do that. Yeah. Um, I'm not necessarily in the same lane as you, so I'm not going to be like creating, uh, you know what I'm saying, for me to be around you more often because we're collaborating. It's yeah. not necessar necessarily a thing. And the other events that we do co-participating, you're working and I'm there as like an attendee typically. Yeah. And so... Um, for me, it was pretty cool because I, I do admire you. And Being immersed into someone else's world, it, like, keeps the kid in me. So, you know, like, when I was a kid, I really enjoyed comic books and superheroes and action figures and stuff like that. Um, and it, that was, like, the first moments of me learning how to storytell. Um, but it was also, like, in the midst of you playing with action figures, you're being immersed into a totally different world. Like, out, it's like outer body almost. And that's what I feel like when I'm like reading something or when I'm watching a movie um, and watching things like I normally don't particularly care about. Like I watched what in like an Italian film like two weeks, three weeks ago and it's solely like reading subtitles like cause it was strictly Italian, but I could like be immersed in the story. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dang, dude, like and then I just my mind started like imagine if I was in you know Rome right now, like what would that what would that be like? So it's just. Um, I think it's, it's curiosity. I think sometimes is adult responsibilities can weigh on us so much where that we throw out the kid side um, until something traumatic happens. Mm. And like I don't, I want to keep on nurturing the the kid Abram because like that's who I'm really making the stories for. It's like I'm making the stories for like ten year old Abram because a ten year old Abram would definitely follow me now and be like, ah, oh, I want to make stuff like that. Like, I know that for a fact, because I was following people at that time that mm -hmm. did stuff like this. So, yeah, I think um, that, that keeps me a kid. Just be curious. I think also I, I'm learning now to be actually okay with who I am, what kind of dude I am. Because um, I think now it's easy to create a facade of who other people think we should be. So I'm not, obviously I'm not like a buff, chiseled guy. But he might be. I might. I'm, I'm in the gym. I might. But I'm not like a buff, chiseled guy. I, I socially awkward a little bit. Um, but I'm learning to be okay with that. Look in the mirror and be like, I like Abram. Mm -hmm. And obviously some days are better than others. But yeah, I think it's just like being okay with who I am. I love that. Yeah. I love that. You shared that you're a, you're a curious kid. You're a curious individual who asks a lot of questions that sometimes annoys people. Yeah. Would you mind giving maybe some examples or thinking of a moment where your curiosity um, or a question you asked actually like benefited you in a way, like maybe you learned something new or you got an opportunity or you impressed somebody who is a mentor or yeah. I don't know if that question is direct enough for you to understand yeah. what I'm trying to ask, but yeah, just like curiosity and asking questions is something that me personally and maybe even as a platform here at voices of value i want to put on a high pedestal like i think curiosity and asking questions can be something that is a powerful skill trait skill trait skill set that anyone can develop yeah um and can get them far so yeah just talk about maybe a moment where you were asking too many questions but it actually helped you learn something um cool so i got work with like entrepreneurs so I'm um, interested in the investment process. Like, how do you actually raise capital? How do you, um, you know, how do you even build a business? So, like, I'm regardless of the industry, I'm asking questions. So with um, Pipeline, like right now, it's uh, we have like a plethora of entrepreneurs. And in those meetings, I just get to ask questions like how in this particular industry outside of tech, like how are you raising money 
Like how, what does that look like? Or I think one specific example is when um, uh, Josh Lewis was starting in Ken, like we were still in the process of like investment and all that stuff. And I just started asking questions and it, but it helped me understand when I work with other businesses, how the process of storytelling doesn't stop at social media. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you have to be able to tell a story all the way to getting someone to put money in your business. It's just a different, different way of portraying that story, but you need to understand how to do it. So if I understand investment and raising capital, then I'll be able to like display that story to where it's palatable to someone like you or me, who's a consumer of the product and then someone who's high level that wants to put money in the business. So I think that's like one like high level example. Um, I also, is there another one that like benefited me like hell is? I'll say Isai, if I'm being honest, like, um, I think during, it might've been during elevator money, like watching him, it was after elevator money. Cause we were hanging more and like watching him film. I was like, what is this? What is this? Why are you using this camera? What is, and it's like, because of Isai, I'm a better storyteller and filmmaker now. Um, because I, I saw him, how his process looks. So even if it's on my content or using my own camera, I'm like, why are you doing this? Why, mm-hmm. why do you set your exposure to that? Why are you using this piece instead of some piece I have at home? So um, I think that's like maybe a, a more of a specific um, answer. I don't know if that was too long winded. No, no. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So 2021, yeah. 2022, and now we're halfway through 2023. Yeah. Could you highlight maybe one big lesson or maybe one story from each of those years that kind of brings us to where we're at today, I guess, or, or kind of summarizes that year? The reason I'm yeah. asking this question is our last conversation was spring of 2021. So, again, don't rush your answer. If you already have something, you have it. If not, yeah. feel free to reflect. But spring 2021 and the remainder of 2021 – What's something that happened there that kind of defined that year? And yeah. then try to do the same thing for 2022 and where we're at here. Yeah. 2023. Um, so 2021, right after we spoke, I don't, that was March? March, yeah, March okay. 25th. So in April, I got robbed at gunpoint and we got my car stolen. So I had two dudes put their guns to my head and told me to give me the car. Um, it was late at night. I was coming from church. And after that, it like it heightened how like one how precious life was but also um i was very naive and like so it kind of made me grow up like very very quick um so i I became more reserved and more um direct on boundaries like for real, um, because that that whole situation came from a lack of boundaries. Mm-hmm. So, um, that I think that that whole twenty twenty one year was like a lesson of of boundaries and what does Abram want. Um, so twenty twenty two that was what last year. Um, that that was kind of mul- multiple lessons, um, but one big lesson was I think on risk taking like taking the the jump. I think um I I quit my job. I um you know, my, my relationship kind of fell apart and it was what's next? And can I stay in the situation that I'm in? Can I sulk? Obviously it was, you know, trash. But do you know, what's next? Are you going to take this this jump? Do you want to try something out? And I just kind of did it. Um I struggled for a little bit, but it's I think that was like one of the best decisions I made. Um, then I think this year, dang, what is this year? Um, I think, I think this year has taught me a lot about intention. Um, so both from a relationship side, but also just from um, a personal side. So I think the intention kind of goes with, with love a little bit as well. Um, 
so I, th- I think with with the love side it's been like um what's the, what's the process of dating and love and figuring all that I've never really done that before so um it's not the not the best kind of thing to go through but it sucks but I think it's a good lesson to have I think also the intention of my side is um kind of where do I want to be in my life and what people do I want to have around me? Hmm. Um, and I think that goes over to the love side as well. But I think that like this year it's, I've cut away people. Um, and I've also said no a lot, Mm -hmm. which I'm proud of myself, business stuff, personal, like, no, if it's not aligned with my morals, my purpose and where I'm really heading, well, like my intention is I'm cool. It's, mm-hmm. it's a no. So I think that's like a sum up all, all three years. I love that. Thank you. So you mentioned two experiences in there that brought the word anger to my brain. Yeah. And the emotion of anger, being angry, yeah. angry black man. Like these yeah. are things that came in my head right there. So yeah. talk to me about anger and how you process it. Um, do you think that that emotion is valuable as a human? And yeah, approach it from whatever perspective. I feel like this. Would, I would. I also feel like this would be a video you'd make and be like, "Angry black man." Yeah. <laughs> and then talk about anger. I don't know why. But no, that's, that's no. why I asked the question too, because I just I literally visualized a video of yours happening, like talking about this exact topic. And I don't know if you've done that or if I'm just yeah. I don't know. But no, like yeah. I haven't done it yet. But that's, I think. With, with black men, anger is different. We're not, we're not supposed to show any type of aggression. Um, but a- anger is a very natural thing. Um, but I think with, with black men, we have to be very strategic about how we show anger because people get scared. Um, but when... Um, I've actually been dealing with this, like transparently been dealing with this this week, like anger. Mm-hmm. And it's about how you handle the emotion because and it's to me it's a feeling in that moment i'm reacting to something that has happened and um i could lash out i could cuss i could do all that stuff but what does it benefit and i'm not saying like you don't feel the emotion um like when i got robbed i felt anger like i felt anger at the world but i felt anger at myself like how could you be so stupid um but in that moment I like had to really like be patient and just be like after the anger subsides like what are you really feeling and it was like vulnerability like that like in that moment I felt vulnerability because the anger was um fencing around the real the real root of the emotion so I like that's just me in my apartment. Out, outward anger, like if someone were to do something crazy, I'm very strategic on. I'm not. I don't uh, because anger as black men gets misconstrued. Frustration as black men get as a black man gets misconstrued as well. Um, so I've I've learned to not uh, mask, but it's definitely been. Um, I'm gonna pause this conversation. I'm gonna come back later. Um, and I've, I've, that's one of the biggest like things I've learned to say is I'm comfortable saying, I don't want to have this conversation right now. I'll come back at a later time. And it's mainly because I'm angry Mm -hmm. and I don't want to do something that's going to either put me in jail or put me in, you know, some type of uh, hot water within my career, my personal life. So I, I actually would like to do a video on anger. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. I love what you said there at the end. I feel like a lot of people can apply that to, uh, the personal relationships, the statement you said, hey, I'm going to pause this conversation. We're going to come back to it later. Yep. I'm feeling angry. Yeah. And as partners on the flip side of that, we got to learn how to accept that and respect that and understand that it's for the benefit of the relationship. Yeah. I just wanted to share that because I felt like that was a good no, thing. No, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, that's perfect. Um, so there's a few more things I want to address. Um Maybe less serious. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, not because I want to be less serious, but because they are less serious. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about fashion and style. Yeah. Um, I think you have a unique style. I think that you maybe don't talk about it a lot, but I think you do care about fashion. 
and you can tell me if I'm wrong because I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. Um, but just talk about let's let's define style and fashion um, from Abrams' perspective, and then dive into maybe how you look at it or how you approach it when you're shopping for new clothes or um, when you're going to an event. Uh, I just want to talk about style and fashion. Yeah. So um, style to me is just like a. I feel like it's, it's personal interests exuded through clothing and garments. That's what I really think it is. Um, I'm, I feel like I dress like a dad. Like I don't really like flashy things. Um, like I, I don't know. I just I dress like a dad, professor maybe. But that's like kind of the vibe that I like. Um, I definitely did go through phases where I just wore things because other people said you should wear this. So you should wear designer like I but I I don't want to do that like mm-hmm. um if you want to wear designer that's you that's your thing but um I think with me it's this has definitely been a kind of like a eight month process of like going and seeing like what does Abram really like and putting together it's like mood boards like who what people do I like to dress so who would I would like to dress like I like Steve Jobs and I like 90s you know, like the way Denzel Washington used to dress, or Spike Lee used to dress, or a John Singleton. Like it was definitely dad jeans and a button up. Jerry mm-hmm. Seinfeld. Um, and I, as weird as it sounds, because my sister and I used to clown my dad all the time, but my dad is the king of dad fits. Like it's he has just a basic shirt, maybe some jeans and some New Balances or like some sketches or something. We're like, bro, what are you wearing? But now, like, I can take that stuff. And okay, let me get with this pant that's a little bit more tailored, and this shirt that's a little bit more fitted to my body, and some some shoes that maybe look like those a little less cheesy, and <laughs> now I got a fit. So, um, it's it's definitely just like, yeah, um, it that's I think that's a, a piece that is like helped me with the identity of Abram, like who Abram actually is, because I feel like if I if I walk out the house being like, I. I like the way I look. It's that confidence is going to come through in some way, shape, or form. Hmm. So, yeah. What other um, categories, interests, things would maybe the outside world consider vain or, um, I don't know. I think our material, so style and fashion, I think is one. Oh, mm-hmm. why, why is he dressed so night? Nice? Like you don't need to be wearing all that or look clean everywhere you go, bro. We're yeah. just going to the fucking movies with your boys, whatever. Yeah. Um, but what else? Is there anything else in your mind that you care a lot about that you think society would consider vain, or society would consider too materialistic, or that society would just attack you for? Um. <laughs> Imagine Twitter's like watching you right now. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, tech, I really like, but like from a minimalistic standpoint, Mm -hmm. like, so I really care about the gear that I've garnered over the years. Um, and have, yeah, tech, computers, my cameras, like, um, I don't, now I don't really believe in buying like things frivolously. Like there needs to be a purpose. Um, so, you know, recently get, got a new camera but it was for the purpose to make my my content look a lot better and mm. even you know, i was doing more shoots so i could take it with me and it could you know like use it as my arsenal but now it's definitely like tech um notebooks i've i've recently uh i didn't like paper like i hated paper so i thought everything should be digital but um i found the value in writing on paper again especially like it's just a little it's like a little green notebook that I carry almost everywhere with me and it has like these little tabs so I can pull you know if it's a meeting I know what color tab it is so it's all color coded um but that's something like I I like I will turn back around if I left it somewhere to go pick it up it's like that serious um and I've so with these notebooks like you can replace the paper and mm-hmm. it's like small little booklets um and I've gotten like three of those filled up already so like that's something that um, I care about a lot, which I didn't think I would care about. I thought it would be like the other notebooks and journals I had that would just be in a corner. 
I'd like I take that mug everywhere. So um let's put that let's put that in the in the link description if you got that yeah. little Amazon or whatever yeah, you, wherever uh, you got it from. Paper Republic. I'll Paper yeah, Republic. I'll definitely I'll send you the send, send you the place. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I love that. But yeah, that's then like the I think those are two big things that um I like care about like a lot. Mm. So yeah. Name one let's 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 make this a little unique. All right. So well I consider it unique. <laughs> um all right, one person from the tech world, one person from let's say pop culture, mm-hmm. and then one person that most people don't know. And the, the the reason you're naming them is that they inspire you. So who are these people? One person from the tech world, one person from pop culture, and then one person most people wouldn't know. Hmm. One person from tech world, I think, obviously, it's like Steve Jobs. Like that's someone who, who, in, who inspires me. One person from pop culture who inspires me. That's a, that's a good one. If it's not Kanye West, it's weird as it sounds. It's not Kanye West. It's probably Jerry Seinfeld. Hmm. That's, that's a weird one, but um, yeah. What's the, what stands out to you about Jerry Seinfeld? To be able to Seinfeld, have a my bad. to show to like to have a show that ran for so long with the same formula, and also to make it like extremely profitable, is like crazy to me. Like it's, um, but it's also like they kind of to me they push like a new type of storytelling in sitcom. Mm. It's, it's this very like secular storytelling style because they'll have Jerry have that, you know, that uh, stand-up bit at the beginning, but the stand-up bit relates to the ending of mm-hmm. the episode. Yeah. And so it feels very secular. And I, I like, watching that, it's like, that's my go-to sitcom. So, like, or just my go-to show. Like, if I'm watching, it's, like, kind of, like, studying. Mm-hmm. So I'm, like, okay, how can the beginning hit the end and have all these, like, and they also have, like, little sub plots that lead to the ending as well so it's like it's crazy to me but i that's one dude who i look at and it's like crazy i love that and Um, one person most people would not know one person i have to go back mm, what what do you mean by just someone they wouldn't know like someone that's not in the media what no i would say someone I think a better way to say it would be someone people wouldn't expect you to say. Like, for example, everyone that knows me or listens to this podcast, if I was like, corn inspires me, mm-hmm. they'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, someone. Anthony Bourdain. Mm-hmm. Um, R.I.P. Yeah. That I... I've just now, like, I'm getting into him, so it's been probably, like, two months, maybe a month and a half, so I've been watching No Reservations and mm-hmm. Parts Unknown, um, and, and now, like, I'm reading his book, and um, to, to, I think it goes to your point of 10 and 20 years, I think listening to his story shows me it's, like, it's never too late. Mm-hmm. It's, like, how do you go from a chef to a best best-selling author and then like this crazy storyteller that goes across the world to eat food like how how does what's the progression of that and he started in his 40s like (laughs) so um i think the reason i like him so much is he's changed my perspective of storytelling and like not necessarily serving the audience um it's it's yeah i think that's like a whole another hot take thing but yes i I think anthony bourdain is my guy i love that yeah i love it 
Abram, man, I'm super appreciative of you agreeing to come on for a part two. Yeah. Gratitude is one descriptor of what I'm feeling inside. Yeah. But just happy, and I'm happy that the conversation um, flowed the way it did. Yeah. I think it flowed very well. I think we were able to really have what I like to shoot for in these podcasts, which is like, hey, we just sat down in a coffee shop and we're catching up like genuinely. Yeah. It didn't feel to me like I was in the middle of a interview for my content. Yeah. You know what no. I'm so I appreciate you making me feel that way. Yeah. Um, I'm over here looking at your uh, your ride scooter that you're yeah. going to head back <laughs> home on and uh, wondering if you could like put somebody on the back like Peggy's on a bike. But anyways, that's another yeah. <laughs> story. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we ask every guest on the show when they leave um, and I'm gonna have to double back and listen to see if I asked this question to you on March 21st of yeah. 2021, because if I did, I'd like to put the two of them together. Yeah. Um, it's your last day on earth. You're 115 years old, but your great, great grandchildren are sitting at your feet. And this is the last thing you get to leave them with. And they ask you, great, great grandpa, what's one piece of advice on how to live a good life? What would you tell them? Oh, gosh. I'm such a nerd. I have a list <laughs> in my phone. I love that a lot. See, this is this is good shit. Prepared. Hmm. I would say live with a sense of urgency. Mm. I think that's the last thing I would tell them. Mm. Live with a sense of urgency. I like that. Live with a sense of urgency, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to pretend like you guys are the great, great grandchildren out there listening. Take that. Run with it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode with Abram Schaefer. Abram, could you please plug them on where they can find you, how they can support you, or if there are any new endeavors I don't know about that they can support yeah. as well, please let us know. Yeah, yeah. You can follow me on Instagram at Abram Schaefer, TikTok at Abram Schaefer as well. Um, I'll be coming out with some content with Pipeline Entrepreneurs. Um, doing more of a, a docu series with them, so that'll be coming out very shortly. Um, but yeah, those those are the, the main things. I love yeah. it. I love it, ladies and gentlemen. Leave a five star review, as you know that is the only way we can grow. Go follow Abram, and with that, it's the show. <laughs>